Hello, my name is Chad Hart. I'm an extension economist with Iowa State University. And here at the end of June, USDA gives us an update on acreage as we look at plantings across the country. And that report came out earlier today, and it had a few surprises that definitely moved the corn market, especially as we look there. So let's, let's go through those numbers. So as we're looking at what we saw, we got not only an acreage report, but a stocks report. And in general, what I would say is that what we saw is the numbers came out very bearish on the corn side, mixed as we looked at soybeans. In terms of the corn number, what we see is that stocks definitely have been building up compared to last year. And in fact, when we look, there's a roughly about a 900 million bushel gain in stock levels compared to last year at this time. Now, that said, we started out year over year being about 1.7 billion bushels above what we had the previous year. And so you can see that number's been coming down, but what the trade had been expecting was seeing a larger disappearance of corn during this period of time between March and June. As we look, you go back here at the March 1 difference, and it was basically at 950 million bushels. Now it's down to 890 million. So we did see some additional usage come in this year, but not quite at the pace that had it had been in earlier in the year. And so that was a negative factor as we looked at the corn market. Now, the same thing sort of exists for soybeans as you look there, as you look at the soybean market. But the challenge there is that with corn, the trade was expecting to see greater disappearance. With soybeans, the trade really wasn't. And in fact, when these numbers came in, and you see here that, you know, again, soybean stocks are higher year over year, but again, the trade was expecting that to be the case. And so we came in with 970 million bushels still left in storage as of June 1. That is about 170 million bushels above what it was at this time last year, but that's roughly where we were in March as well. And so as far as old crop was concerned, old crop corn definitely took it on the chin because of the higher stock levels compared to expectations. Soybeans, more mixed because they came in around expectations. But probably the big number that really shifted things around was what we saw on acreage. And it had been this question coming out of the March reports that showed that farmers had told us originally in their principal crop area, we were looking at 313 million acres set to be planted there. And normally we're around 319 million. Well, with the June update on the acreage side, we saw the number increase up to 315 million. So out of the 6 million acres we were sort of missing in March, we found 2 million back here with the June reports. And it looks like those 2 million acres concentrated in two crops corn and cotton, as we looked at where the additions were in comparison to what we thought in March. In fact, as you look at the sort of the way things played out in March for corn, this is over on the left hand side of this graph, the trade had been expecting, expecting acreage in that 91 to 92 million acre range and USDA came in at 90. As we sit here in June now, the trade had adjusted down into that 90 million acre range and USDA found farmers that were planting more like 91 and a half million. So you can see that, you know, sort of the trade was surprised on the downside in March and was surprised on the upside here in June. That again, added pressure and, and lowered prices as we look at new crop corn. When we're looking at soybeans, you see it's much more mixed in terms of the trade estimates were all around, you know, all, all over the place when it came to March, and USDA landed in the middle of those. Come to June, the trade had been expecting a, an increase in soybean area, and what we found was a slight decrease, actually, in soybean area. So the number was smaller than what the trade had expected, and that added a little positive momentum to the soybean market, especially as we look at new crop futures out there. Now, looking at that acreage shift, where did it occur? Well, the biggest shift up on the corn side was in Kansas, but I really want to concentrate on the area, Iowa, Nebraska, South Dakota, Minnesota. That's where we did see substantial growth in that corn area between March and June, but that's also where we're now seeing the flooding take it into account here. And that's one of the things that's 
going to be an open question as we move forward here. Remember, with the June acreage report, that is what is planted, but it doesn't necessarily reflect what may have been planted, but also flooded out. And so one of the things I'll be watching as we approach August and September, and we start to get the Farm Service Agency certified acreage data is how does that line up and will we see another adjustment in this case pulling that corn area back down because of the potential flooding problems because when you're looking at the acreage that usda reported this 91.475 million acres roughly 3.36 million of it had not been planted at the time of the june survey and so some of that may have disappeared given the extreme weather we've been seeing over the course of June. And that can have an impact also on the soybean market as well here. Again, as USDA looked here in June, they found 81.6 million acres were going to be planted to soybeans. But out of that total, as of, again, the June survey, 12.8 million acres still had yet to be planted. And so, again, that's another area of walk to watch here and that we could see further acreage adjustments as we move forward through the summer. When you look at what that did to the balance sheet in the case of corn, adding that 1.4 million acres added roughly about 240 million bushels to the expected production total. So that moved north of 15 million bushels. And again, put a lot of downward pressure on prices. Here within a couple of weeks, USDA will do the July WASDE report and that'll update the demand estimates as well. Those weren't adjusted here with the reports we got here at the end of June. So it'll be interesting to watch, to see how USDA adjusts corn and soybean demand given these new acreage numbers. When we're looking at soybeans, the idea is again, that adjustment down in area, down to 86.1 million acres, took out about 16 to 17 million bushels there. So a small adjustment down in terms of production. But what we sort of saw was again, corn took a heavy hit here in terms of pricing. We do see nearby corn futures lowered before four to, below four dollars here for the first time in a long time. But you can also see some fairly strong carry being built into the market as we look forward for the 2024 and 2025 crops. It's also the case now where over the course of most of May and June, the markets had been showing prices stronger than USDA's. Uh, current season average price estimates, now we fell below those estimates. In the case of corn, the USDA estimate for 2024-2025 is $4.40 a bushel. And as you can see, the market, as we finished up here in June 28th, is down around 420. So we've seen a sizable movement down over the past couple of weeks in the corn market. And a lot of it is due to that fear that these additional acres could come in and that production would would help lower the boom on prices, if you will. When we're looking at the soybean side, it was a little more moderated as far as that's concerned. In fact, prices as we looked further out did actually go higher because of the lighter acreage that showed up with the today's report, but we're still seeing prices that are below right now USDA's estimates for 2024-2025. And so overall, like I say, what we've been seeing is both crops have been slipping here over the past couple of weeks and have put those season average price estimates from the futures markets below our break-even prices of $4.60 for corn and $11.25 for beans. As we're moving forward, one of the things to be watching is, again, how these adverse weather conditions and the flooding may have not only impacted those potential acres, so it may end up shrinking the acreage problem that corn faced today, but also what do we see in terms of crop conditions and will that sort of moderate and help bring prices back up from the lows that we're seeing right now. Well, with that, I'm gonna stop that sharing there, flip back and uh, remind folks that as we're looking forward here, like I say, the next big report will be the July WASD report. Within that, I wouldn't expect to see any additional acreage shifts, but we could start to see USDA look at what they're projecting for yields so you look out there because they do tend to take that into account with the, starting with the july report and then the other thing like i say i'm watching is looking out there towards august and september because that's when usda massages those um, 
certified acres from the Farm Service Agency into the estimates we get here from NAS. And so, like I say, we could see additional acreage movements going forward. So here's a case where normally the June acreage report provides us some answers to questions. What happened here in 2024 was it just continued the questions we have about how many acres actually did get planted this spring and will be able to produce a crop as we move forward this fall. With that, my name is Chad Hart, Extension Economist at Iowa State University. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm.